Welcome to the Women's Hope Podcast, co-hosted by Dr. Shelby Cullen and Kimberly Cummings. The Women's Hope Podcast is about speaking woman to woman, generation to generation, bringing hope and encouragement through the Word of God. Now, let's join Dr. Shelby Cullen and Kimberly Cummings on the Women's Hope Podcast. Well, hello again. Hello, Kimberly. (laughs) So good to be with you. You too. Always, always so thankful. Welcome to the Women's Hope Podcast. Shelby and I are thankful to have you join us today as we continue our series, Getting to the Heart of Biblical Discipleship. Our topic today on getting to the heart of biblical discipleship, as we mentioned at the end of the last episode, is what role does psychology play in counseling or discipling women? That's right. And we do want to start back up where we left off. So you asked the question, and so therefore, Miss Kimberly Cummings, I'm going to have you define psychology for our listening audience. Well, thank you very much. So psychology defined is basically the scientific study of the human mind and its functions, especially those affecting behavior in a given context. So psychology's methods over the decades, would you say, have changed? Yes. Yes. Um, One example that I can think of that I experienced with um, a woman that I was discipling was shock therapy. And during the early 80s, she went through shock therapy. And what they found is that it wasn't effective. It didn't do what they had hoped that it would do. And so you don't see shock therapy as relative today in the philosophy of, you know, psychological care. Mm -hmm. What we want to help the people see today the role of psychology and how the Bible addresses uh, the soul and the mind. Yeah, that's that's really good. I'm, I'm really glad that we're taking the time to even talk about this because I think that over the years I do teach a class on intro to psychology with undergraduate students. When we're studying and we're talking about psychology, really what we're talking about here is being confronted with differing opinions mm-hmm. and differing worldviews. Um, would you agree that everyone has a worldview? I I would totally agree. And I would yeah. also say that scripture cautions us about Absolutely. differing worldviews. It does. And so we, we all have differing worldviews. We have a set of beliefs um, about the most important issues in life. All of us are going to have a commitment to various uh, presuppositions by which we interpret our world. So when we're talking about secular psychology, it's really no different. Um, it definitely has a worldview, does it not? Right. Um, and they, of course, have their own set of assumptions that form their worldview. And typically, as you study psychology, what you're going to find is that primarily they view or presuppose man as primarily physical, okay, biology. You know, they're not going to take the soul into consideration at all. So if you want a sort of a a very academic label, um, oftentimes we would say that this worldview would be labeled as a materialist or a monist because these psychologists are only considering how the body of the person is is um, influencing their behavior, hence your definition. It's all kind of encompassing that idea. But as disciplers or biblical counselors, um, I would hope that we would at least take the physical into view um, or into consideration, but we would not say or even believe that the Bible teaches that our body causes us to sin. We would say um, that it it definitely has an influence. Um, There's always temptation um, towards sin in that way, but it doesn't cause you. But our friends, out there that are like neuroscientists and that kind of a psychologist would heartily um, disagree with me because they're kind of thinking more along the lines of your body or your brain for that matter um, is the is to blame for struggles in life. And you can think of all the implications of that, can't you? When we blame the body uh, for behavior. I'm just right now, I'm, <laughs> I'm for, this is a women's podcast and I'm thinking hormones. Yeah. Yeah. We could easily mm-hmm. point to um, PMS, uh, all Although we would say that that is something that women really do struggle with. Um, it's something biological. Um, of course, that is going to be, there's going to be a temptation to respond in a particular way. So um, how do we deal with that? So that's one aspect of psychology. And, and, you know, quite honestly, we probably should call it the psychologies instead of a singular word because there's so many uh, different views out there. Um, for example, there's another uh, view that's very steeped in a humanistic approach, right? Mm-hmm. We talk about psychology. They have a tendency to believe that man is essentially born good. Are you familiar with Carl Rogers? Very. Well, painfully. (laughs) 
I mean, Rogerian therapy, that's mm-hmm. really what Jay Adams, uh, the founder of biblical counseling, was reacting to. So he's the father of that talk therapy, of that client-centered therapy. It's very man-centered. And so I'm always amazed when I hear Christian counselors using that methodology in their counseling because it is extremely man-centered and mm-hmm. as, you know, hence the worldview humanistic. So, you know, there's going to be a variety of things. You're going to have a psychologist also be very quick to point to a person's struggle as being um, the causal of that is their environment or their upbringing or maybe they have low self-esteem or some kind of circumstantial thing and do you remember from your days in college what uh, how we referred to that when we were blaming environment we call it the what theory the nurture theory yes (laughs) nurture yeah nurture nurture nurture. Mm -hmm. and so nurture is you know you're believing that um, yeah you know the, the parents that you gave me that how I was brought up things like that or they might say something like, well, your behavior is the direct cause of, of a gene that you were, you had a particular gene when you were born. Sure. That's more the nature, an inherited gene or a chromosome. They're looking for a chromosome that explains behavior, that kind of thing. And I think a good example of that would be someone um, who's been labeled by a secular psychologist as an alcoholic um, or just even, you know, the para, the para programs that label people. The, a person who is told that they'll come away from that counsel and they'll think to themselves, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. So that, that's a that's a disease model, right? So they're they're thinking along those lines, and you know they may believe that the worldview um, they'll believe the worldview that says that you know you're predisposed towards alcoholism, if you will, their language, um, due to maybe a set of genes that you inherited from a father who was predisposed towards alcohol or a grandfather. I mean, the language they use at times it just boggles the mind. I mean, if you really look at it for what it is. It negates sin for number one, and it really absolves people of personal responsibility. So where is the hope in that? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And all of the things that we said in our last episode, according to 2 Peter about, we've been given everything pertaining to life. That's right. And godliness. And godliness. (laughs) So this would apply to that, right? Because scripture addresses what the world calls alcoholism as drunkenness. And then we see in the New Testament that... That we are given everything pertaining to life and godliness, so we have hope in the more sure word That's and exactly how right. to deal with this sin issue, whatever, whether it's hormones or mommy drinking. Oh yeah, you know, and, and, and in essence, um, when you think about what's happening here, is a person that is turning to alcohol. Um, what they're really turning to is a false savior, mm-hmm. right? They're they're looking to find relief. Um, uh, from pressures um, in life, um, and so what does the Bible call that? They call it, it calls it enslavement, and that's right. really what's going on. But there's always hope for people. Um, and from our point of view, um, we know that drunkardness, like you said, is a sin, and so there's always hope for a sinner. You know, people can find freedom from those things um, as they turn from that and they turn towards Christ, maybe to be saved for the first time or just to repent from turning to idols and to turn to Christ and mm-hmm. begin to live. For him alone. So bottom line, um, as a Christian, um, I'm obviously going to have problems with psychology because it's simply steeped in an unbiblical worldview. And I'm going to be concerned about that when I teach my students, <laughs> for sure. sure. Um, I mean, they the secular psychology does not consider sin. It does not consider the deceitfulness of the heart. It does not consider confession or repentance, sanctification for that matter. Um, it's going to deny the gospel, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's has a does not have a biblical anthropology, you know, the view of man or the sufficiency of scripture. So why in the world would I refer someone out to a psychologist? Uh, they don't have the same worldview or hope that we have or belief set of beliefs that we right, right. we hold. So but some yeah, are even atheists. That's correct. A lot of them. It, it, Carl Rogers, in fact, the, the man that I mentioned before, um, he actually had a lot of dabblings with the occult. So mm-hmm. he had some strange ideas. Sigmund Freud was an atheist for sure. A lot of these men that are, you know, like Wilhelm Wundt, um, some of these these people that uh, we've studied over the years, you know, they all had some kind of leanings towards atheism or dualism or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, it's so true. And, and you know, but we do want to at least have a balanced view in that we can say, because of our biblical worldview, that there is God does have a common grace. And so there are psychologists that um, have made some helpful observations about human behavior 
that can be helpful. And mm-hmm. it's something that even I can do in biblical counseling, meaning we call it something different, but we can at least observe behavior, make some notes about that, ask some good question questions. But the difference is, is that a secular psychologist is always going to prescribe something different than me. Their prescription will, will point them away from Christ, which makes their prescription a false gospel. Um, and they're always going to be at odds with God's view of someone's problem um, and the solution to it. What does Jesus teach? It's out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, although man is physical, we would agree with that. I mean, obviously we're physical, right, we have right, a body. Right. What comes out of your mouth or what's manifested in your outer man behavior is really more of a reflection of what is in the inner man. And your inner man, the heart, that's the real you. Mm-hmm. That's the real Kim. That's the real Shelby. Um, it, it encompasses our cognition, thoughts, beliefs, affections, our will, choices that we make, and including our emotions. That Absolutely. Matter. So, yeah. Well, and I appreciate you saying that because there are descriptions of issues of life and there are prescriptions. That's right. We can benefit from the descriptions of our friends in psychology. And I have, and they have been helpful in uh, working through maybe a difficult case to look at those observations. But again, where does our hope lie? Mm -hmm. Their answers are going to be different than ours. And again, we are warned of that in the very first psalm of the book of psalm that we are we are told how blessed is the man who does not walk according to the counsel of the wicked Mm. nor stand in the path of sinners nor sit in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the Mm -hmm. law of the lord that's right and so you see that digression don't you Mm -hmm. and we see that in the psychological world um in the in in empty philosophies and vain philosophies we see a digression of walking in the counsel of wicked, sit, uh, standing with sinners and sitting with scoffers. Mm-hmm. And so when we choose a psychological method uh, for help, we are sitting in the seat with someone who is a God mocker. That's right. And as harsh as that may sound, I feel that it is a loving, eye-opening thing for us to understand how contradictory uh, man's methods are. And we see it in Scripture. And I'm not going to read all of it, but I would encourage our listeners to go to 1 Corinthians 1 and start at verse 18 and go all the way to chapter 2, 16. And it, it explains the difference between the foolishness of, of man, the wisdom of man, and the foolishness of God and the wisdom of God. And so basically this passage says that uh, the foolishness of God is wiser than any of man's wisdom. And that just amazes me because mm-hmm. there is nothing foolish in God. That's right. What he <laughs> but what he is saying is that it surpasses all of it. And Paul is warning the Corinthians and we need to take heed as well. Mm-hmm. And so our next episode, we are going to take some time and we are going to talk about what the Bible says about uh, the inner man Good. and the heart of man and uh, the ways of man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so that we can have a better understanding of the difference between psychology and what the Bible says. Um, the different philosophies. Good. And and I think that that will be a, a good stopping place for us today. Okay. And then we will we will uh, meet you again next week. Great. So what have we looked at today? We've uh, kind of looked at what psychologists believe about man and change. And as we go forward in part three of our series, we're going to look more closely at what the Bible has to say about man's nature and man's problems. So I look forward to that. I do too. Thanks to Servants of Grace for hosting the Women's Hope Podcast. Our listeners can find us online at servantsofgrace.org. So thank you for joining us today, ladies, and enjoy your coffee. Thank you for listening to the Women's Hope Podcast today. If you enjoyed this show, please leave a rating on your podcast app of choice, share the podcast with your friends and family on social media, or subscribe to support the show. We would love to hear from you on Instagram and Twitter using the handle Women's Hope Show, on Facebook at Servants of Grace, or on the front page of servantsofgrace.org.